All right, hey guys, welcome back to another League of Legends video. Today I'm going to show you guys another VOD review of set in the mid lane. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one. It's going to be a little bit similar towards like my other VOD reviews that I'm doing in this new series that I'm trying to do, uh, where I play set mid and pretty much show you guys like more detailed explanations of what I do with set mid. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Okay, so in this match, on the enemy team is a Zed mid. A Kane jungle and a Shen top with a Ezreal and Nami bot lane. So in this match, uh, this match is actually one of the most important matches I've had to show you guys how capable set mid is right now. So I'm going to show you guys some play by play sequences to show you why set mid is really good. So we're just going to get straight into the level one to level three trades here with set mid. So. I'm going to start off a little earlier here where I take a few trades with Zed and I want to show you really quick. So here we're just going to go over some pretty basic mechanics uh, that that's super important to know on set. So let me just get that going. Okay, so here I do a level 1 facebreaker combo with my Hellblades Keystone. Uh, which is pretty much your standard level 1 trade. You just pull the enemy as they CS, especially if they're a melee champion, just like Zed, and you pretty much just land 4 auto attacks. Uh, chaining sets attack sequences, so so you guys know, like in my uh, Hellblades combo video, you'll, you'll know what I'll be talking about. So you just want to pretty much just auto reset twice with the Hellblade cycle at level 1, and then at level 2, we try to look for a all-in as much as possible. Uh, there I kind of whiffed the face breaker. But that's okay because you always don't need to land those like crucial face breakers all the time. Even if it's a melee matchup. So uh, I'm just pretty much zoning the Zed into his tower so I can get lane priority for my Hecarim. So I'm going to fast forward this because this is just, you know... Pretty much the same too. So the Hell Blades combos are really fast, as you can see. Uh, I get, I trade really fast with this Keystone. So getting ganked is pretty much like, it, it's okay because the rate at which set trades is really fast. So you really don't need to worry about like blind ganks because you'll be finishing your trades pretty quickly. So I flash face break the Zed into my minion, and then I get a stun. That's pretty standard. Uh, you always want to fish for those level 1 to level 3 all-ins. Uh, because Set's uh, damage early on is extremely, extremely high for Hellblades. Because he gets bonus attack damage on his right punches. Around, I think, like 30 to 40 AD uh, per punch. And it's actually quite a lot. So, uh, another important thing to know is that you don't really rush AD uh, on Set. You actually want to stack health because... The more health you build, the more your Haymaker is going to deal in terms of damage. Uh, that's really important to know because the more HP you have, the more grit you charge, which means the higher the true damage. So um, here on my first back, I get Boots and Daggers with a Ruby Crystal. Uh, I generally finish my uh, my Zerkagris, uh first before I get like a Ruby Crystal or a Giant Spell on my second back because we'll be building Titanic Hydra in this game. And that's usually the the core item that I always get on set. I don't get anything else. I don't build a Gore Drinker on him. Uh, I don't build like Stride Breaker anymore because those Mythics got nerfed really hard. And I honestly never really liked them uh, as much as Titanic Hydra because uh, it's the only legendary item in the game that gives you 500 health, 500 health which is the max. Uh, I believe it's the max stat for like a health based item, which is quite a ton and I think by the time you get Titanic Hydra at level 10 you'll have like like 2100 HP at like level 10 which is actually insane so uh, that's pretty much how I build set uh, so now we're back in the lane uh, we're going for our level 5 trades now so I'm pretty much just you know rinsing and repeating uh, set as a like lane priority type of champion like he's he's a really good lane bully into melee matchups Especially into Zed because he just can't out DPS me uh, with my Hellblades combos. 
And it's also a good thing to know is that uh, Zed is really squishy. So you can really knock him out of his like shadows if you're like really good at catching him. And I'll show you guys a few plays I think that I get on him. Uh, that I'm able to like punish him if he uses his shadow to like trade or CS with me. So I pretty much use Set's range to, to his advantage. And I pretty much just beat the shit out of the Zed. So we're just going to fast forward through this because these are just pretty much just basic um basic uh trading so i'm gonna fast forward this and i'm trying to go get to the point where kane ganks me here and then i'm gonna slow it down again okay so here the kane decides to level four gank me and he miserably fails like at level four so i face break him i do my hell blaze combo i pretty much just alt him and then he dies so that's a good thing to know is that sets all in level six is actually very powerful. Um, so you always want to take those trades uh, as much as possible. And don't be afraid of getting ganked because you always want to keep, you know, keep set at, you know, at, at, at an early advantage. So the, the, the Shen top laner decides to ult the Zed and he ultimately pretty much protects him, but he doesn't get a kill. So uh, that... Ultimate pretty much saved him, but it really didn't do much in terms of like uh, In terms of like just changing the team fight there, but I Took a trade here with the Shen because my bot lane was collapsing to my to my lane, but uh, That was pretty much just uh, you know, just a roam around in terms of like skirmishes So that wasn't really much of a play, but we got a We got a kill on Kane, which he really backfired on his gank, so here, we're going to look at uh, a level 6 all-in here. Um, we're going to show you like what you can do to a Zed really quickly. So another Hellblade cycle with a long-range Haymaker. So that's a good thing to also know on set is that that, that range is absolutely just insane. Um, Zed just can't do anything. He can't out-DPS me because he risks just getting pulled into my face breaker. And he really doesn't have a lot of like... He has like a lot of dashes, but he can't like escape the range that Set has. So it's always a good thing to know is that Set's very capable of fighting evasive champions like Katarina, Zed, Yasuo. He's very good. He's a very good anti-assassin champion. So let's move forward here to another play that I want to show you guys. So here I get the Zed low again, and I just want to show you once more what I, I think he uh, tries to defend his jungle because the cane is, uh, he's just running away from me because my Hecarim is counter jungling the cane. But here, uh, I collapse on the team fight here. I kill the Zed, but I unfortunately die here because the Shen ults the cane. And the team fight really just doesn't go into our favor, but you know, I'll always take a kill if it always guarantees me gold, so... I'd say that was worth it for me, but uh, for that counter jungling play that Hecker made, it probably wasn't the best for him. So. Yeah, so right now this Zed is pretty much screwed. He's 0-3. I'm up four kills. I killed him three times, and it's it's really it's really strong what set mid is capable of. So let's get back straight into the mid lane really quick. I want to show you guys some team fight clips now. Uh, some some team fight sequences that actually really shine with set mid. So I'm gonna show you some uh, some dragon fights here, some baron picks and some dragon fights that we group around the objective as a you know as the the game progresses because you always wanna you know contest objectives with set. Uh, Set's really good as a punisher, so he's an anti initiator too because of how powerful his ultimate is. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, where I. Where the king gets the rift herald, but here we just kill the king, and we just we punish him after he got the herald. So that really wasn't, you know, too much of a you know a bad play. We were able to punish him even though he got the herald, but it's okay. It's pretty much worthless at, at this point because the plates fell, and here we just lose this team fight pretty bad. 
Um, we just got caught out in a really bad trade. Uh, that was a good Nami ult. She punished my team, and we just pretty much screwed us up. Screw, screwed our lead over. Um, so that was a pretty bad thing. Uh, let me show you guys real quick uh, one of the team fights that I wanted to get to here. Okay, so I'm just pretty much just split pushing. My team just tried to distract the Baron Dance there, but I was able to get an inhib. And here is where I get a really nice punish. Uh, I unfortunately don't kill the Ezreal, but the thing that I want to get towards is that um, I think in this team fight we we actually win here. I think. Let me just replay this one more time. So I anti initiate on the king, so he gets off my team, and I pretty much zone off the backline. So my my backline will be able to focus on the Zed. Uh, I had my GA, so I I had enough time to distract him. So, I think here my team actually loses, but I was able to be a like a distraction, um, so I could buy time for my team. But I don't think that they get the Drake here. No, this is where they all died. Okay, so this was not the right fight that I wanted to show you. Um, this was the fight, guys. Okay, so here is where we respawn after we died around the other Drake the first time, and then as we spawned back into the pit. Uh, we were, I was able to get a, a nice engage on the king. I was able to avoid the knockup with the Nami. I repositioned their entire team and I fucking killed him. I got a double kill with the Haymaker. Um, I pretty much just zone out, you know, Kane out of my team. And, you know, it, a good tip during team fights is to zone out the closest target from your team. That's like a tank or a bruiser that's about to initiate and just you know, re-engage them onto their team and then just pull them all together just like that. So that's really good at anti-engaging. He's a very good punisher and that's why he's a really good mid, mid laner. So there we pretty much just like one-sided that, you know, that, that fight. So we're just going to watch that one more time at, at a full speeder. So my team is basically just doing the Elder Drake. I'm just zoning out the cane. We're just, you know, just we're just buying time. Trying to find a good pick here, and then boom, I just get on the can. Ekrim initiates with me, and I just get a double kill flip on the bot lane. So that's a good thing to know is that Set is actually a really good, like, he's a really good, like, um, playmaking champion because he's able to, like, reorganize your team in a way where it's like, okay, if Set throws the tank into the enemy, they'll be able to, like, throw their CC at one direction because. His face breaker is going to reposition, you know, the entire enemy team. So that's something that you always want to look forward to. So here I'm going to show you guys another fight where it's going to be around the Baron pit. So we get this Elder Drake and then here is where the Baron is um, that I want to show you real quick. So let me see what that Baron fight is. Yeah, this game was actually like quite, it was getting quite difficult, so. Um, I think that Baron fight was actually just the Herald that I just want to show you guys. I thought there was another Baron fight, but I don't think I got it. No, that was an Army fight. Yeah, so there really wasn't a Baron fight. Uh, it was mostly just a, a Dragon fight that I wanted to show you guys, so that was the right fight. Um, just, just one play. So, if you're contesting an Elder Drake, you just really want to look at, you know, the positioning on the enemy team and looking for, like, a really good collapse here. So, we're just going to wash it one more time just because of how good it looks. Yeah, that ult, Seth's ult just, it, it, it's a good ultimate because it makes you vulnerable to all crowd control. Because while you're in your animation, you're invulnerable to knock up some CC. But here, like, I just didn't die. Like, I had my Titanic Hydra. And I had 2500 HP as a mid laner, so that's kind of like crazy how much damage and how much survivability set has uh, with the items that I built. I got an Executioner's Calling for the King, and I built my core items. I got Titanic Hydra, 
I got Immortal Shield Bow, GA, and that's pretty much a lot of survivability on set because you get health, you get two shields from your Haymaker, and you get a revive after you die. So, uh, one last fight I want to show you guys is the fight around where we siege the tower after the Drake. Um, after we got the Drake, so here is the last fight I want to show you guys. This was pretty much the game, the game winning play. So here. As we got the tower, the Shen tries to like punish my team for sieging, but we have Elder, we have Baron, he just made the worst call for his team. I was able to re-engage. I I face break their backline and I pretty much just annihilate their team with Beckram. So we just pretty much, you know, did the same thing at the Elder Drake. We just punished for them. Like twice. And they just couldn't win. Any type of initiation they made just backfired. Because set mid is so broken. And yeah, that was pretty much the game winning fight. So that was pretty much everything that I wanted to show you guys in this video. So this was a good like replay analysis that I like doing for you guys. Because it really teaches you a lot versus when I play like live commentary games. This is like more productive. And it show you guys like how strong set mid is and how like more knowledgeable and powerful it is so hope you enjoyed that one and i'll have another vibe review after this one all right guys peace and i hope you enjoyed the video